Hello, biology teachers. Welcome to video two. Um, let's start off with a joke. So why did the biologists break up with the physicist? They had no chemistry. And you guys all know that's false because there's definitely chemistry in biology. Let's go ahead and take a look at how that plays out in our actual curriculum app. So sorry for the lame jokes. Uh, I like to humor myself. So we're going to start off right here in the scope and sequence. That was video one just so that we can make a clear link from here to there into our curriculum landing page. The whole curriculum map includes kind of your landing page, which has all your prep material. And then as you scroll down, you get into your pacing guide. We're going to focus on the pacing guide in another video. I want to start up here with the landing page, which has a lot of good information for planning out your unit. Um, and I think you'll find a lot of useful stuff. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in just a bit. And that helps us kind of be able to see all what this is here. And I'm just going to kind of walk you guys through how do I see you guys using the different components of this to help your lesson planning, help your class be more engaging and tie back to kind of a comprehensive unit and not disjointed topics. Um, so hopefully you guys find some use out of this. Some of the stuff on here are things I either created or I found online. And then a lot of it is me pulling information off of Discovery Ed so that way we don't have to go and find it to be used. So we'll go through it. Hopefully you see that this curriculum landing page lends itself to really good lesson planning. We're just going to go top to bottom. And I'm actually going to start over here on the right. And then we'll kind of cover this left hand side afterwards. Every unit starts with an anchoring phenomena. Now, Discovery Ed did not give these to me. So I went and I found different phenomena that correlate to some part um, or multiple parts of the unit. So since this one's about chemistry, structure, and the functions of life, I thought about, okay, well, we're going to be getting into some cells. Those kind of are, they run the basic functions of life at the cellular level. Um, you've got different types of cells, some that are independent, some that work together. But there's a cool fact that I've learned that the human body is made up of 30 trillion cells. Most of those are red blood cells, but we also contain within our body or on our skin, 38 trillion bacteria cells. So just by a count number, how many total, there's actually more bacteria cells than human cells, uh, which is kind of crazy. But bacteria cells are much, much, much smaller. So by mass, we're definitely more human. But that's kind of a good thing to put out there to your students to have them think about like, and who are you and what are you made up of? And I even linked here to a video that you might find useful, uh, that we are only about 43% human. And that's kind of a good thought provoking question. It's like, how's that all work? And so that's going to have students engaged from the get go thinking about, uh, I definitely don't understand how all this works. I never knew that. I want to learn all of this so I can kind of come back to this phenomenon and really understand it. Paired up with the anchoring phenomena, I also have unit projects. Now these, again, I went and I found something online and I think I mentioned in the previous video, you don't have to do this project. You might find a different version of it. You might have a different idea entirely. You guys are the experts in teaching this subject in your classes. You know what will work. But I do like the idea of using projects as a way to finalize the end of learning, encapsulate everything that the students learned in that unit um, and giving them a platform to demonstrate that knowledge um, in the way that's not a test or a quiz or writing. So I find these pretty useful. Um, these were just kind of, I had to look around online and I found something that might be easily done in a day or two. Um, so that way you're not digging into all the time that we fight over um, with snow days and sports and all the other stuff going on in school. So take a look at those. Um, if you guys have better ideas, shoot that to me and I'll push it out to everybody. I want this, I want you to think of these as like a version one curriculum map and together we're going to make improvements to make this even better for everybody. So if you ever have any better ideas for projects or phenomena, let me know. Those can be adjusted if you guys find something better. Your guiding questions, these are things that they need to think about as you move throughout the unit. And by the end of the unit, they should be able to answer these very scientifically using claims, evidence, reasonings. That's a good process to have students be able to write and structure their writing in a way that brings in their scientific evidence. Um, 
And a way to keep those questions in mind for you and the students is I created these unit project posters um, that help keep all these ideas together, that phenomena, the guiding questions, the main learning. So as it loads up here in a second, you'll see I've got kind of the title page. Here's your phenomena so that way students kind of remember that as you keep learning. Oh yeah, we're trying to answer this or understand it better. You've got your concept map. So what things are you learning throughout this concept? And then your guiding questions. Those are what we're trying to answer by the end of this. So hopefully I'll have these guys printed and laminated. You can put them on your door so students see them coming in and out every day. Your instructional coaches and principals will see this and they'll be able to tell what you guys are learning about. And so that might be a good way for um, keeping everybody accountable for what's going on in the classroom. So hope you guys think those are pretty cool. Um, I threw those together with just some of the information I already had on here. Moving on down this section, I'm not positive if I'll change yet or not but it'll be something similar to this where this is the K-12 vertical alignment. This was done long ago prior to me, um, but it gives you an idea of what topics and when they're covered. So you can go, okay, either based off concept or standard, um, when was the last time students learned about a certain concept? And then maybe you think maybe they missed it. So I mean, to need to build in scaffolds because they might've missed that and we can't just assume that they know it. So let me build scaffolding into my lessons. So this might have some update to it in this section, but it will be something similar enough to that. Similar to that project poster, I have a unit outline map. This is kind of like a teacher facing version um, that just helps. Here's my flow as I move throughout the unit. It's nothing that special. You start with your phenomena. You may want to preview what the project is with your students so they keep in mind what they're working towards. So that way, when you get to the end, they're not surprised by some project. You can kind of introduce the idea at the beginning, maybe some reminders. And then when you get down to the project at the end, they already knew that it was coming up. Your three chapters, you're going to end with your project and then your unit assessment. I think I mentioned this in the previous video. Um, I've only created unit assessments for the end of the quarters, which covers multiple units sometimes. So if you want to create individual unit assessments, that's something that we can co-work together to build something um, as a team. So you might find that useful for just what's my flow of my lessons um, that's available to you. And sometimes, especially since we jump around the resource a bit, it's hard to kind of keep a through line for what the learning is. So I've typed up these st unit storylines that help kind of piece together this journey that students are taking. So. Unit one, we're kind of catching on what students should know about chemistry, which is water, and water is a huge component of the necessity of life. So, okay, we learned about water and chemistry, so let's start with that and then build that concept into our biology. And so this kind of explains that out and walks you through what is this unit storyline. You might find those to be useful. All right, so that's that side. Coming down on this page, this is just bookmark links to go down. So if you were to click on this, it would just scroll the page down to that specific concept. The teacher background, these are really cool. Let's open one up. And I pulled this in my next video. I'll do a breakdown of Discovery Ed. I'll show you where I got all this from. Um, but what this does is here's some ideas for how you can introduce this concept to your students, things that would engage them. Here are the um, the prior knowledge for students. So this is what students should already know coming into this lesson. But like I said before, they don't always get this in all their lessons. Sometimes they, um, well, you got COVID, they missed that year. You got students from other districts, states, countries, um, you know, all sorts of different reasons that they may have missed that. So keep these in mind, they should know this, but if they don't, you might wanna have some scaffolds built in. So that way, boom. We can catch them up real quick and move forward. The common misconceptions is really good. Typically, there's more than one, but basically, what are the students going to have issues with as we move forward um, so that we can be prepared to correct those in a strategic way? And it also comes, this all came from Discovery Edge. This is not me. Differentiation strategies. So for your struggling students, here are some ideas. For your ELL students, think about these. 
and then your accelerated students, you can push them forward with this. So there's some really good ideas for you. I may end up changing this document to not be a PDF, but a Google Doc. So that way you guys can actually click on the links. I didn't think about that when I was creating this, but you might find this to be useful for your planning, even if you know the content really well, but there's some good ideas in there. So that's what the teacher background knowledge is. Similar to the scope and sequence, your proficiency skills are still listed here. If you like those um, objectives and the student um, I can statements, you might find those useful in your lesson planning. And then you have your assessments listed here. This is a good spot that you can go ahead and look at the question types, language, what's being um, asked of students ahead of time. So that way you're not running into tests at the end of the unit a quarter completely blind and the students don't know what's going on. The last thing on this page is just going to be a kind of a link district resources. So your gizmos, I'll probably have FET on here, um, all the different things that we'll be using. I'm going to modify this spot a little bit. Right now it's just a list of links. So I don't know what this will look like by the time you guys view this, but it'll be updated. One other thing I'm going to be adding on to here is a link that will allow you to provide feedback on every curriculum map. And it'll break it down. It's like, hey, what did you think about the unit landing page? How is the scope and sequence? And you'll be able to do certain questions that rate one to five. And there will be questions that are open-ended and you can give your ideas, things that you loved and things like, oh, here's an idea that might enhance it. I view this as version 1.0 and you guys are gonna help give me feedback. So that way this can change throughout the year and across next year. And this can be a document that Everybody has a bit of a hand in and we find more use out of it. So that link will be there. I'll be emailing it at the end of unit. So definitely keep your eye out for that. So that way I get the feedback from you guys and any changes I make, it's based off data. That's pretty much it for the um, unit landing page. I will highlight that I put this here. Whoa. Um, just as, as you move down into this further pacing guide, I use a few abbreviations um, just so I don't have to spell out longer text that um, Discovery I'd use. So just that's going to be consistent throughout the year. So give that a brief read and then you're pretty much set. Okay, before this video becomes super long, let's end it there. And I hope you guys have been enjoying these, finding uses in these um, different documents. I will catch you guys in the next video.